Okay, this is 2007 FRQ number four. This is the non-calculator portion, so no calculator is allowed. So a lot of this you have to do some estimation, all right? Let's see if we can decipher this problem. A particle moves along the x-axis with position at time t given by this function, x of t e to negative t sine of t between zero and two pi. Part A says, find the time at which the particle is farthest to the left. Justify your answer. So when you want farthest of anything or the most of anything, you are looking for the maximum or the minimum. Hence, you, the trick is to find the first derivative, set it equal to zero, and see if we can get an extrema. So that's your first step. In part A, you will find x prime of t. Now, since this is e to the negative t times sine of t, there are two t's here. Watch out, you need to use product rule. So it would be the derivative of the first one, e to the negative t, which is e to the negative t with a negative in front. Keep your sine of t. Plus, now your original function, e to the negative t, the derivative of sine of t is cosine of t. All right. Look at what is in common. We can factor out e to the negative t or negative e to the negative t. doesn't really matter. Up to you. So we have e to the negative t negative sine t plus cosine t. That would be the most factored form. Now we set that equal to zero to see if we can solve for an extrema. So zero equals this. You split it and say e zero equals e to negative t and zero equals negative sine of t plus cosine of t. e to any power, even if it's a negative power, it will never ever equal zero because it's an exponential function it will approach zero but never cross, so you will never have an answer for that. So our only option is now to solve for this. If you move the sine t over, you get sine of t equals cosine of t. That um, could be helpful if you know when cosine is exactly the same as uh, sine. It is when uh, you have pi over 4 in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3 at uh, 5 pi over 4. If that's still a little bit hard to see, the other option would be to divide by cosine of t cosine of t, hence you get tangent of t equals 1. That may be a little bit easier to see. When is tangent 1? Well, that is when t equals pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So those are your two answers. Now, you got to check because this function does end. It is bounded. It's bounded between 0 and 2 pi. So you have to check and say, hey, which of these gives me the farthest to the left? The farthest to the left means I want the most... Um, most negative answer because when the particle, when it's talking about position like so, and left and right, right means the velocity is positive, left means the velocity is negative. So you want the most left possible. So you want to find the most negative answer possible. All right. So let's check x of zero because that's your endpoint. X of pi over four, x of five pi over four, and x of 2 pi. So these are all, these are your endpoints, and these are two extremas you got. All right. So we get e to negative 0, sine of 0. Doesn't matter because sine of 0 is 0. Awesome. We can jump to this one too. e to negative 0, sine of 2 pi. Sine of 2 pi is still 0, so this is still 0. Okay. So now all I need is these two. You have e to the negative pi over 4, sine of pi over 4. Okay. So I don't know what this is, but I know that e to negative pi over 4 is some sort of a fraction, right? Some sort of fraction times sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So that's a positive answer. It's a positive answer. All right. Maybe that'll be helpful um, in a minute. Let me see what the other one will give me. I get e to the negative 5 pi over 4 sine of negative 5 pi. Oh, sorry. Sine of 5 pi over 4 not negative 5 pi over 4, sine of 5 pi over 4. So this first thing still gives me a fraction. Whether it's bigger or uh, smaller than the one before, it doesn't matter because what ultimately decides is this one. Sine of 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2, so that's a negative answer. So my position starts at 0, goes out to positive, and then goes all the way to negative and comes back to 0. So this is my leftmost um, leftmost answer. This is the minimum, right? So this is the absolute minimum at 5 pi over 4. Therefore, the particle is farthest left when t equals 5 pi over 4. So that's your justif justifier answer. You will say that this is an absolute min 
since it's bounded, so you do have an absolute minimum at t equals five pi over four. Therefore, this is particle is farthest, oops, cannot spell, left when t equals five pi over four. All right, the answer is part A. Part B now says, find the value of the constant A for which x of t satisfies the equation A double prime, x double prime plus x prime plus x equals t for zero, between zero to two pi. All right, so you already have x prime. We already did that in the first part of the question. So now let's find uh, the second derivative, right? So that's what we need in this problem. So x double prime of t. Okay, I'm gonna use this first function. It really doesn't matter which one I use. Either way, I use product rule. If I use this one, I gotta use product rule two times. If I do this one, I gotta use product rule once. Well, let's do this one then. I think this one's a little bit quicker. So product rule of this one says we have e to negative t is e to negative t, negative in front still, negative sine of t plus cosine of t, plus keeping this one e to negative t, the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine t. Cosine gives me negative sine of t. All right, so what does this do for me? Well, if we can take a quick look, they both have an e to the negative t. We can take that out. I think this is a little easier to see how we can factor if you, um, if you actually distribute it out and you can clean up a little bit more here. So let's see, if we distribute it through, we get e to negative t times negative sine of t, that's e to negative t sine of t, minus e to negative t cosine of t, oh, not plus, minus, because this one's e to negative t minus cosine t, so minus e to negative t cosine t, and then minus e to negative t sine t. So luckily you will see this is e to negative t cosine t, e to negative t cosine t, and this is a positive sine t, negative sine t, so these go away nicely, leaving me with negative two, e to negative t cosine of t. All right, so this is going to be our second derivative. Well, let's check the function. The function says a double prime plus first derivative plus original equals zero. Okay, so a times negative two e to negative t cosine of t plus my first derivative. Okay, I think I'm, it might be easier to just refer to the first one. So negative e to negative t sine of t plus e to negative t cosine of t. And then plus the original function e to negative t sine of t, all this must equal zero. So first things first, these beautifully go away nicely. So I have negative 2a e to negative t cosine of t plus e to negative t cosine of t equals zero. What do we have in common? Well, we have a e to negative t and cosine of t in common. I have negative 2a left plus one equals zero. So let's see, we have we can set them all equal to zero separately, right? So e to negative t, because we're trying to solve for a actually. So since we're trying to solve for a, all these things don't really matter. You have zero, cosine of t equals zero. These two don't really matter. It's the last one, negative two a plus one equals zero, right? If you recall back in algebra two, if you just take each of these parentheses set it equal to zero, you're able to solve. And since we're, our only goal is to solve for a, a now will equal to one half. And that will be your final answer. Okay, that's it for this problem.